I turn to Bogdan Klitsch, who is former Defense Minister of Poland, and of course who is particularly involved in the question of organizing the security relationship between Europe and the US. Bogdan. Thank you very much, Carl. Uh, uh, I will not concentrate on the history, even the recent history between our meeting in, uh, uh, in Rabat and, uh, and here, although so much happened that it would be necessary to mention that. I will concentrate on the current uh, uh, threats and challenges per perception, uh, not going too far, not going beyond the traditional uh, uh, Euro-Atlantic area. So, some words about uh, Russia, NATO, and the response of the European Union. Russia, uh, without doubt, remains an aggressive and disruptive uh, power that challenged the international order in Ukraine. We were talking about that uh, two years and three years ago. Uh, showing uh, to be ready to use the force overseas, uh, then in Syria, now in Libya and also in the Sahel. Let's remember about the presence of Wagner units in, uh, in Sahel. Russia tries to reintegrate as big as part of the post-Soviet space as possible. Uh, we are witnesses of the soft annexation of, uh, of Belarus that didn't begin uh, recently, that began uh, before the uh, uh, the revolution of uh, freedom in that country, in Belarus, but accelerated uh, according to those processes uh, recently. Without doubt, Rus Russia will interfere with uh, political processes of the West, mainly with elections, as it did uh, in 2016 in the US and 2015 in my country trying to deepen in divisions in the West, both within NATO and within the European community. Uh, I, have, I am convinced that uh, Russia will try to establish a dominant military position in the Arctic. Let's take it seriously into consideration. Although this uh, rivalry between powers and uh, various actors uh, is not so clear right now, and we'll continue to set up new re relationships uh, uh, in Africa, playing here in the Middle East uh, an important and influential role. On the other hand, uh, one should be aware of Russian disadvantages. I mean, especially small economy that creates around 2% of uh, a global GDP and uh, dependence on uh, energy prices. Uh, uh, but taking, let's take into account also its advantages, that's important. Uh, large conventional forces, modernized weapons of uh, mass destruction, energy resources and aggressive foreign policy that uh, <coughs> we can observe, especially during last, uh, last uh, decade. So when China, from the, from the European point of view, is a big challenge for Europe. <coughs> Russia creates a threat for Europe, especially for Central Europe. What about NATO in such uh, circumstances? We wait, of course, for a new strategic uh, concept. The former, the current one is outdated. Uh, I took part in shaping this uh, Lisbon uh, uh, strategic concept in 2010. Uh, so uh, uh, let's remember that uh, among its uh, three essential goals, es essential tasks, uh, the second, uh, I mean, the crisis management uh, uh, was put aside and will not be introduced uh, in uh, years or decades and uh, quick withdrawal from both uh, the ISAF mission before and recently the, uh, the, the, the Resolute Support uh, mission shows that there is a, a crisis management fatigue and uh, uh, the Alliance will not return easily to this, uh, to this task. And the third uh, essential goal, I mean uh, uh, the international cooperative security model doesn't exist anymore doesn't exist anymore because uh, 
it was based on the assumption that dialogue is uh, much better than confrontation, that cooperation is better than uh, uh, that uh, confrontation. And frankly speaking, it was uh, blown up by the invasion of Russian troops uh, uh, in Ukraine, uh, both uh, uh, in uh, the Crimea and in, uh, in Donbass. And it was not uh, replaced by any other concept of, uh, of security. So we have from this existing uh, current uh, strategic concept only the first uh, essential goal, and this is uh, deterrence and, uh, and defense. Uh, the next strategic concept has to be, uh, has to be uh, extended and has to uh, incorporate the current challenges and current uh, tasks uh, stemming uh, not only from Russian but are also from Chinese uh, uh, foreign and security uh, policy and should respond to current uh, main uh, threats uh, like, for example, energy or cyber threats. The report NATO 2030 is a kind of indicator what could be and what should be, according to my understanding, introduced into this, uh, this concept and into the practice of the alliance. First of all, a real political unity of, uh, of NATO. We witnessed during the President uh, Trump's area uh, a good military cooperation, absolutely a good uh, military cooperation, but with a bad political dialogue within uh, NATO. So such a political unity, such an uh, improvement of the political transatlantic link should be the main task for, uh, of, for, for all the allies. Secondly, what is important, it is the return to values, to those values that are important for both, I mean for NATO and for the EU, that were described in 1949 in the preamble of the Washington Treaty, democracy, the rule of law, uh, 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 human rights, uh, public liberties, etc., etc., uh, that should create uh, the real basis for cooperation between nations. I don't exclude, of course, uh, national interests, and they will be the driving force of, uh, of the alliance, but this... Uh, ethical basis should be, uh, should be reinforced. And thirdly, what was important part of, uh, of the report, this is the cooperation with the European Union. Not only the political, but institutional cooperation with the European Union. I will try to continue this in the discussion because uh, uh, within the EU, right now, we are after the after the end, after the recovery from the uh, crisis of political will as for uh, the uh, uh, development of the common security and defense policy with creation of uh, European Defense Fund, with the activation of PESCO, with uh, a card mechanism, and with implementation of the global strategy of the EU, but we are facing another crisis connected with financial challenges that we face right now because of the coronavirus consequences. Thank you. Thank you, Bogdan. This question of reconciling Atlantic and European approaches to deal with security, we should really come back to that in the discussion because it's absolutely central in the wake of the present crisis between the US and Europe on the issues that uh, were mentioned before. Absolutely.